do scripture study, prayer, time in the temple, whatever ways that you find uh, bring you inspiration to study these things and get confirmation from the Spirit where possible. Also, I will make errors from time to time, so please uh, look at the video descriptions. Uh, feel free to make comments in the replies, and I'll try to update them as needed. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the 1335 days from Daniel chapter 12, verse 12. Now, I believe you take the 1290 days mentioned in Daniel chapter 12, verse 11, and you subtract that, and you get 45 days of something. I think it's probably intense tribulation, like Israel and the world are starting to experience. It could mean also a time of sanctification, or a time to prepare for more outpouring of miracles and blessings for those of the faithful and those who are seeking God. So to start out, um, the earth was created temporally and spiritually, just like all things. DNC 29, 32, 34, and Article of Faith 10 mentions that concept as well as the building up and restoration of the New Jerusalem. So to understand um, the framework here, uh, this is a tale of two cities, Jerusalem and New York City, New York, USA. Jerusalem being the eventual spiritual capital city of the world from Article of Faith 10 and also from Isaiah and others, we know that Jerusalem in the millennium will go forth the law or the word of the Lord and from Zion or New Jerusalem will go forth the law. So New York City, I believe, represents the temporal spiritual capital city of the world. See my prior videos on that discussion. Um, so uh, New York City, USA, will have to be the temporal capital power and city will have to be transferred to New Jerusalem in Jackson County, Missouri area, USA, as we believe in this article of faith number 10. And Salt Lake City, Utah, USA, as the spiritual capital city of the world, will have to transfer to Jerusalem in Israel when Christ comes again in the second coming. So, um, here's the scripture for that. First shall be last, and the last shall be first in all things. First, temporally, second, spiritually, which is the beginning of my work, and again, first temporal and second spiritual, which is the last of my work, DNC 29, 30 through 32. So in verse 34, he says, All things unto me are spiritual. Not any time have I given unto you a law which is temporal. So um, we also know from 2 Nephi chapter 12, and verse 3, and also Isaiah chapter 2, verse 3. It says, For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So we do know that that will be the eventual state in the millennium. And in a Ensign 2020 April article, the prophet, President Russell M. Nelson, wrote an article entitled, The Future of the Church, Preparing the World for the Savior's Second Coming. He said, speaking of the second coming, about Jesus, His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. I always think about Handel's Messiah when I hear those words. Then uh, President Nelson said, he will govern from two world capitals, one in Old Jerusalem, see Zechariah 14, and the other in New Jerusalem, built upon the American continent, Articles of Faith number 10. Another temple will yet be built in Jerusalem. From that temple, he shall reign forever as Lord of Lords. Water will issue from under the temple. Waters of the Dead Sea will be healed. See Ezekiel 47, 1 through 8. I also believe that's likely to happen in Salt Lake City as the spiritual capital city of the world right now. And since it does have a Dead Sea, the Great Salt Lake, that it's likely that um, that Dead Sea will also be healed. So um, we had some interesting events happen on October 3rd and 4th of 2023. October 3rd, Russia conducts its first ever nationwide emergency alert test, simulating a nuclear attack across the 11 time zones of its country. It's the first time in their history they had ever done that. On that same day, the U.S. House of Representatives voted out their Speaker of the House. That was the first time in USA history. So I think about uh, the scripture that says, a house divided against itself cannot stand. And our U.S. House of Representatives is literally divided and is pretty much paralyzed 
um, until they are able to come to some agreement. As of the recording of this date, they've had three votes for one particular speaker. It's all been rejected. Uh, a sign of three is a sign from God. It could go on four or five votes more, but I believe, you know, we'll see what happens. It could be um, tomorrow, which is the um, 20, what is it, 21st? Yeah, 21st. Um, or it could be, you know, the end of the 45 days when they elect a speaker. It could be anywhere in between, but it would be interesting if it happened tomorrow or on the end of the 45 days, but we'll see. Uh, verse 12 of Daniel, chapter 12 says, Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the 1,335 days. That's a little more than three and a half years. It's three and a half years plus 45 days. Um, so the very next day after October 3rd, uh, the USA did the same thing. They did uh, a first ever, well, not a first ever, a, a, a nationwide test of the emergency broadcast system. It was the seventh test ever such conducted. Um, it was the third time they had done it wirelessly across all mobile phones and mobile devices in the US. And I would view it as like a three day advance warning. October 4th was three days before the attack on the 7th. It's the Lord's way of saying something big is coming. Get ready. Uh, on October 7th, it was the attack on Jerusalem, Israel by Hamas. Uh, we also had triple earthquakes on three different continents in Mexico, Papua New Guinea, and Afghanistan. 6.3, 6.7, and 6.3 respectively. Afghanistan got a second quake uh, shortly thereafter. Um, also, interesting thing on October 7th was it was Putin's birthday, president of Russia. Um, he was born October 7th, 1952. Um, so if you take the day the temples uh, closed worldwide, March 26, 2020, you add 1290 days, it's October 7th. That was the exact day Israel was attacked. And that is mentioned in Daniel chapter 12, verse 11. From the time the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. So you can see the Lord was precise in his timing down to the day. And I've talked a little bit about what that means in my prior videos. It just means it's set up. It doesn't mean Jerusalem is destroyed. It doesn't necessarily mean Armageddon, but uh, it is set up. I also believe it's indicative of the fall or destruction that's going to occur in New York City, New York. If you look at the Bible Dictionary entry on Abomination of Desolation, the very last scripture is DNC 84, 114 to 117. I've covered this in my prior videos, but it also gives warning to three U.S. cities, New York, Boston, and Albany. So I think uh, there is a lot of ties here between 9-11 and what just happened in Jerusalem, October 7th, 2023. Uh, the IDF, Israeli Defense uh, Ministry Force, has even compared it to 9-11. And just this past week, President Biden went to Jerusalem and told the president or prime minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, he's like, we had our 9-11. This is your 9-11. You should learn from the mistakes that we did uh, on our 9-11 and do better. Although I would say, my personal opinion, the mistakes that our nation did was they didn't repent. And so, yeah, that's true, but I don't necessarily know that Biden knows what is what he's referring to as far as the mistakes, but um, it's interesting how you have a president of the U.S. and, the, and Benjamin Netanyahu talking about this and um, the IDF people in Israel as well. Um, so 2 Nephi chapter 20, verse 11 through 13, has some interesting things about the foreshadowing of the destruction. Uh, God raises up the Assyrian or the waster or the modern day Darius the Mede to destroy Babylon and Egypt. He says, shall I not, as I have done unto Samaria and her idols, so do to Jerusalem and to her idols. Wherefore it shall come to pass that when the Lord hath performed his whole work upon Mount Zion and upon Jerusalem, I will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the king of Assyria and the glory of his high looks. For he saith, by the strength of my hand and by my wisdom, I have done these things, for I am prudent. And I have moved the borders of the people, and I have robbed their treasures, and I have put down, put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. Now think about Putin and Russia and China and what they're doing in Iran. And think of that as he is um, the waster, the destroyer, or they, those nations are, and what they're doing and what's going to happen. Uh, verse 5 through 7. 
O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger and the staff in their hand is their indignation. I will send him against a hypocritical nation and against the people of my wrath. Will I give him a charge to take the spoil, to take the prey, and to tread them down like the mire of the streets? Howbeit he meaneth not so, neither doth his heart think so. But in his heart is destroy and cut off nations, not a few. So these first two scriptures, it's saying when the Lord has done his work upon Mount Zion and upon Jerusalem, that is Mount Zion is New Jerusalem, that is USA, Gentile nations, North and South America. And upon Jerusalem, that's the Jews and their people. He's like, when I have finished cleansing my land, New Jerusalem and Jerusalem, then I'm going to punish um, the waster, the destroyer. And um, he thinks he's really good and he's done everything. But guess what? The Lord is going to. Um, well, the next verse, I'll, I'll read that. He's going to destroy the waster as well. Second Nephi 20, verse 23 through 26. For the Lord God of hosts shall make a consumption even determined in all the land. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, O my people that dwellest in Zion, think about USA, be not afraid of the Assyrian. Think of these other nations who are becoming more powerful, trying to raise their, their armies against US and Gentile nations. He shall smite thee with the rod and shall lift up his hand against thee after the manner of Egypt. For yet a very little while and the indignation shall cease and mine anger in their destruction. And the Lord of hosts shall stir up a scourge for him according to the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Oreb. And as his rod was upon the sea, so shall he lift it up after the manner of Egypt. So what happened with Egypt was he sent out the plagues of Egypt to destroy the armies of Egypt. He's going to do the same thing with the Assyrian who he's going to send. This is a metaphor for how um, they were cleansed in the Old Testament time. The Lord's people didn't hearken unto him, turned in their wicked ways. He sent the armies against him. And when they were done cleansing him, then he stirred up a scourge, the slaughter of Midian. So the Midianites, I think there was, I can't remember how many, it was 100,000, 200,000 or something like that, that were smitten by the angel of the Lord in a single day. So he's like, you know what, I'm going to kill those guys who are going to come in and cleanse your land when I'm done doing my work. Okay, so let's look at these time frames here. Interesting thing, it is 45 days. In Hebrew, when they take numbers, they don't, what I understand, they don't have numbers like 13. They have 10 plus 3. Instead of saying 13, they said 10 and 10 and 3 or something like that. So if you take the 45 days and break it up into 15 days and 30 days, you get an interesting pattern. So 15 days after the 7th is October 22nd, 2023. Um, that is the exact day of the first ever worldwide youth testimony meeting. I don't know if something else in the world will happen. Uh, perhaps the Speaker of the House will be selected. Perhaps there's going to be war changes in Israel on or after that date. Um, then there's 30 days more. Um, that ends November 21st, 2023. If you take a unit as 30 days, then it's kind of like one unit plus a half, 15 days. There is some patterns here, so I don't know if anything's going to happen, but that's one thing we know is scheduled is the Worldwide Testimony Meeting. Now, someone else pointed out to me there's a scripture in DNC 8888, uh, in 87, 89, this says, After your testimony cometh the testimony of earthquakes and floods and fires and vapors of smoke, etc. And so we're having the youth give a testimony. So I wouldn't be surprised if after that, 23rd, maybe the 24th, we see some major events happen in the world, or at least in the USA, even politically, even if it's something as minor as a Speaker of the House being selected finally and agreed upon. Um, interesting thing happened on the 29th of September, 2023, which was New York City, USA, received the worst flooding in 75 years since 1948, which, by the way, happens to be the same year that Israel became a nation. CNN reported record-setting rain overwhelmed New York City's sewer system Friday, sending a surge of water coursing through streets and into basements, schools, subways, and vehicles throughout the nation's most populous city. The water rose fast and furious, catching some commuters off guard as they slogged through Friday morning's rush hour. First responders jumped into action where needed, plucking people from stranded cars and basements, filling like bathtubs. More rain fell in a single day at New York's JFK International Airport, nearly eight inches than any other since 1948. A month's worth of rain fell in Brooklyn in just three hours as it was socked by some of the storm's most intense rainfall rates Friday morning. 
<clears throat> so there's a picture of it. The interesting thing about that is the 29th of September, 1923, 100 years earlier to the exact date, was the date that the mandate for Palestine by the League of Nations, which is prior to the UN, took effect. It took effect on the 29th of December, September, 1923. You go 50 years later, October 7th, 1973, we had the Yom Kippur War, which represents 50 years in the land for the Jews, which is a jubilee year. They counted seven years of Sabbaths, seven sevens was 49, and on the 50th year, it was supposed to be a jubilee. They were to let all slaves go free in ancient Israel and also forgive all debts. If they didn't do it, I understand it might have brought cursings. Uh, they definitely had war on that date or on that year, 6th of October, 1973. It became known as the Yom Kippur War. There's even an entire city uh, in Egypt near Cairo named 6th of October City. You can go on Google Maps and find that. You go another 50 years, uh, and another 50 years were completed since the beginning of that war, 6th of October, 1973. The very next day, 7th of October, 2023, completed the 50 years. You had another war on that exact day. Now, my understanding from news articles is Hamas had been planning this for at least two years. I don't know if they planned it on that day, but I'm pretty sure they did because they're very aware of the religious um, holidays and celebrations of the Jews. The 6th of October ended the Feast of Tabernacles this year. The very next day is when they were attacked. So here's a little bit of information on that. Highlighting um, what I just said, along with the Wikipedia article, you can Google or Wikipedia article that. Also, another interesting thing is it was the second 50 Jubilee year was completed, October 7th, 2023. The Jews have now been in the land of Jerusalem for 100 years, symbolizing the birth of Isaac and the Abrahamic covenant fulfillment, which includes both Jerusalem and New Jerusalem. Genesis chapter 21, verse 3, And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son, being eight days old, as he had commanded him. And Abraham was an hundred years old when Isaac was born unto him. So you see, 100 years later, you got an event happening. And then eight days later, when Isaac was circumcised, which would have been the 7th of October, 2023, that is the year of the war. So you're introducing blood, <laughs> which is what's happening uh, in circumcision. And then there's going to be some healing time and don't know what's next, but we're seeing prophecies fulfilled and interesting parallels. So I've talked about the first ever Russia um, nationwide test of their emergency broadcast system. Here's a little link here about it. They wanted to include preparation for the destruction of up to 70% of Russian housing stock and life support facilities. It will also assume that martial law has been introduced in Russia and that it has gone through full mobilization, which I assume means everyone has been drafted into the army during an emergency. So they're presenting the, the West as a nuclear aggressor. This was the first time they'd ever done it across their country. They had done it regionally, but never uh, across the country all at once. Here's another uh, link here to it on metro.co.uk, article about it with Putin describing it. Also, uh, he planned to, on October 7th, Putin had planned to mark his birthday with a test of a Chernobyl nuke that can fly for weeks on end. I understand it might have been done a day or two before the 7th, but it was planned to be done by his birthday on the 7th. Um, so it would be the 14th test of the Baruf Vestnik missile, dubbed the Flying Chernobyl. The previous 13 attempts are deemed to all failed. Uh, rumors have swirled it is being ready this week as a 71st birthday for Putin. Satellite photos and aviation data suggest preparations are underway for a new test, or one that has already taken place, the New York Times reports. So this is not just a nuke, this is a nuke powered by a nuclear reactor that supposedly can fly for weeks on end. So, um, let's see, I mentioned already the U.S. Speaker of the House of Representatives voted out first in U.S. history. Here's an article on that. That reminds me of Matthew 12, 25, Mark 3, 26, Luke 11, 17, and Luke 12, 52, which all say a similar thing. I will quote from Matthew chapter 12, verse 25 and 20, yeah, at 26. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, 
Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. From the Fox News article, lawmakers had voted to oust Speaker Kevin McCarthy, Republican, California, from his leadership role, the first time in the history of the House of Representatives that the chamber voted to boot a member from the top job. Definitely historic. Um, another thing that happened, um, some ominous precursors. One of the largest healthcare worker strikes in USA history, 75,000 Kaiser workers uh, did a strike on the 3rd of October as well. Um, DNC 45, 30, and 33 talks about an overflowing scourge for a desolating sickness shall cover the land, but my disciples shall stand in holy places and shall not be not moved, and shall be not moved, shall not be moved. And they will take up the sword one against another, and they will kill one another. So we kind of saw this. We did see this during COVID-19, March and April 2020, and further, like the George Floyd riots and so forth. I think this might be a foreshadowing of health problems and plagues about to come upon the earth as well. Um, we talked about the um, three-day advance warning the USA did with their uh, emergency alert system. It was the seventh test the third of the wireless alerts test. Here's the link to it on CBS News, an article of that. Uh, I think it's interesting you have numbers like the seventh test and you have the third test. Sign of three, sign from God. Third wireless alert test, seven symbolizes completion like the seven days of the week or the seven years of tribulation or the seven days of creation, etc. Um, and it was on the 10th month, kind of like the 10 commandments. So a lot of interesting parallels here. I've talked about the triple earthquake that happened. We have this worldwide day of testimony coming up that I mentioned. Another interesting pattern here is um, there's a pattern of 400 years. Um, the Mayflower Compact was signed 21st of November, 1620. You add 400 years um, and then you get 2020. You add three more years and you get this 21st of November, 2023. So there's a 403 year thing that's coming up. Um, also, if you look in the constellations, there's some signs in the heavens that are indicating, well, for example, there is a asteroid that's named uh, Earthquake. It has a Japanese sounding name, but it's supposed to represent Earthquake in Strong's Concordance. It goes through the constellation Aquarius, swirls around a little bit and then leaves and enters right around uh, October 21st and leaves about November 21st. So there's an idea that there might be an increase in earthquakes uh, on the earth or in certain areas over the next 30 days beginning tomorrow. We'll see if that happens or not. We've definitely seen an increase in seismic activity. Um, let's see. Also, here's the information on the Mayflower Compact. Um, there's an old style dating system, which is when they changed from the Julian to the Gregorian calendar. The old style date was November 11th, but the new style is the Gregorian calendar would be November 21st about the uh, Mayflower Compact. Um, let's see. And this is a recap from a preview of my prior video. Uh, I'm just going to give that as an end segue to uh, watch this. This is a pattern, I believe, how the Earth was created, and it went from celestial to terrestrial to telestial and descended. We have the 7,000 years of the family of the earth, and then it's going to ascend from telestial to terrestrial back to celestial. And so we're getting ready to ascend and in preparation for the second coming. And so we are going to see an increase in the temporal transfiguration of the earth. I believe the spiritual transfiguration of the earth for Gentile nations has already been completed on October 7th, that was the end and the beginning of the blood and the anointing and what's going to be happening in the changing and the transfiguration of the earth. So watch my other videos on that. I'll leave you with this scripture, DNC 63, 29. When the earth shall be transfigured, even according to the pattern which was shown unto mine apostles upon the mount, of which account the fullness ye have not yet received. So don't fear, be prepared. If ye are prepared, ye shall not fear. And it will be a great and dreadful day of the Lord. It is going to be great for those who are prepared and righteous and dreadful for those who are not. I share these things with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for watching.